so here I am side stage tuning guitars and basses. But what does a guitar tech actually do? I thought today I had the perfect opportunity to kind of go through that question while I'm restringing Faisal's bass. And the reason I have Faisal's bass right now uh, is a bit of a secret, but uh, it rhymes with hiccup, so uh, take from that what you will. What does a guitar tech do? And what does a guitar tech do? To make my life really, really, really easy. I can just play guitar. It sounds really good. It plays really well. It's in tune. What else do you need? The very obvious one is what the audience sees, which is doing the guitar changes on stage, guitar and bass changes. And so that means handing the guitars and the basses, the guitars and the basses when there needs to be a change that happens, so say a different tuning or something like that. But then there's a lot more that goes into that too. There's doing the guitar changes, and then there's obviously also doing the, the like changing strings and keeping up on general maintenance on the instruments which is kind of what I'm doing right now. What makes it so easy about this bass in particular is that because it's like of the state of it, it's all scratched up and, and all that. I don't have to pay too much attention to keeping it absolutely perfect. Um, but obviously I still try to do the best I can in uh, keeping it clean and, um, and protected. But I don't have to be as worried about if I do get a ding on it or something like that. So I want to just go over kind of like, again, like what a guitar tech does. And I also just kind of want to go over Radar Festival, because that was a really, really fun show. And I got to meet Periphery, which was kind of a big dream come true for me. So this isn't his main bass. This is his B bass, uh, which is the one he uses on Screaming. a set of 45 through, through 135 for that, which is a five string set, and I discard the thinnest string because it is tuned uh, AD, AD. Uh, but yeah, Radar Festival, that was incredibly, incredibly fun. <laughs> so I actually went down to Liverpool a day prior to the rest of the crew arriving. And the main reason I headed up there a day early was because I just kind of wanted to do a quick look over at all the gear, make sure it was still all working and nothing needed maintenance on or anything like that. Uh, so I just kind of just spent that time to do proper maintenance and just uh, look after everything, make sure it was all, all fine and stuff so that it wouldn't be mal malfunctioning during the show. Before the actual show, I'm just gonna restring all their guitars. Another thing that I do as part of that is I order in the strings um, with Theodario, because obviously they're sponsored by Theodario. And then I go on, there's a little website that I use. And then I can just order in the strings that we need, and they get delivered quite quickly. And um, I have this little little uh, notes thing to help me keep track of all the strings that we got and uh, when I've taken stuff out. Just little inventory things to help keep track of all the different strings, because uh, as you can see, we've got quite a lot of them. So, um, and uh, I generally try to keep at least five of each gauge that we use. Uh, quite a lot, but um, that is what needs to happen, so that's what I do. A quick little trick, by the way, in order to get the right length for these kind of stupid tuners is to count two tuners in front um, and then snip there. And then there you'll have the perfect amount of slack for these kind of vintage style Fender tuners, which I'm not the biggest fan of because um, it does leave less room for error, but then I guess it makes me less lazy, um, which is Good, I suppose. So yeah, after that we just kind of got to the festival and pretty much because we were headlining the festival we were given a sound check at the very beginning of the day. No, but I can do it. You've got more of my voice. Yeah! This is what sound checking is like. But then we also got to um, basically just chill for the rest of the day until the actual show. I've got one for you to press for this whole section. Unreal. That slice right there. Then we get to the, get to the build, that another slow thing. With... There you go, the big flash and it's a big flat and everyone's like, Oh my god, it looks unreal. And that's the end of the show. Thank cool. That's Mitchell Dowley, lighting guy. Amazing, amazing guy. Can you show me what you're doing with Heavy's head again? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. 
Radar Radar Festival was so much cooler than I thought it was going to be. They had like multiple booths from like people that were from like different companies, like guitar companies and all that. It was like a, just a massive like kind of like guitar nerds haven type thing. I knew I'd find you here. <laughs> Where else would you be? Nero DSP had a booth set up there. I met their um, their marketing uh, guy, a guy called Josh. He's such a lovely, lovely guy. Aristides was there, uh, which was really cool. My old guitar teacher from back in Hong Kong, he's a proud endorsee of uh, Aristides guitar, so it was cool seeing them uh, here in the UK as well. <laughs> okay, back on topic of what does a guitar tech do? Obviously, so like I said, there's these uh, restringing things. Uh, and that's no another key thing about restring as well, especially for a live environment, is you need to stretch the strings in, especially for how hard Faisal uh, plays and hits the bass. If you don't stretch the strings in, then uh, for someone who hits as hard as Faisal does, then uh, the strings will detune immediately if they're not settled and stretched out. So I have to, I do this quite a lot. Definitely a lot more stretching on a bass and, and then there is for guitar just because there's so much more tension. So there's that and then there's uh, there's other less obvious stuff but I guess once I explain it, it will seem very obvious is that, well this, okay so what I'm going to talk about now it doesn't just apply for guitar attack but for, cr for all the crew and uh, the things that we do to keep the show running. That will include keeping an eye out for anything that might go wrong and just being prepared to fix all problems when those, um, when those problems do occur. And especially when you're playing show after show after show, night after night, problems will happen. It's not so much a matter of if, it's more a matter of when it will happen. I'll give you an example. So the very first, so the second tour I did with Loath, uh, it was a tour with Spirit Box. And the very, very first show that's, uh, of that tour, Eric's standard scale guitar, so not his baritone, started acting really weird. The signal started cutting in and out to the point where it was basically completely unplayable. So he kind of sat out for that whole song, just stood backstage just like, well, what do we do now? That one guitar, uh, which he uses again for Is It Really You, is completely out of action and no backup for it at all, which is not good. We were kind of like, oh no, what do we do? Uh, and then our tour manager, Zach, legend, he ran to the tour bus to grab this guitar. And the only reason I brought this guitar with me on the tour, this is my guitar by the way, is because I want to do some of my master's coursework on the tour bus while we we're driving to and from shows. So really, it was kind of a stroke of luck that we, that I had that. But the problem is, I exclusively pretty much live in drop D, so, um, and the tuning for Screaming and Is It Really You is A, D, A, D, G, B, and drop D is pretty much like a whole fifth higher than that. So, um, the strings that I had won't cut it. So what that meant I had to do was that within the span of, was it three songs? I had to take all the strings off, put in the sets that we use for uh, screaming, which is this one, uh, which is an eight string set, and we discard two of the, uh, uh, the thickest and the thinnest string. Slap on the new set, uh, tune it up. I had to swap the straps over because, uh, I've swapped it back now, but you can see my strap buttons are just normal, typical, strap buttons, whereas the straps they use are the DiMarzio like buckle type thing that screws on uh, to the where the strap button would have been. So I had to swap that over as well. And because I have a floating trim, I, I basically had to screw all the springs tight um, so that w under the tension of the new much thicker strings, the bridge just wouldn't go like this completely. And luckily with the help of Creasy as well, he managed to pull out a drill tuner. So right now I just have this little um, Theodario hand, hand, hand turning one. It was just about 30 seconds before the song was about to start and I was just stood there with my PRS waiting to hand it to Eric. So that was a very stressful moment and I definitely had to sit down to take a breather. Sounds like dog sh**. 
kind of goes for all crews that one of our jobs as crew is to be alert of any problems that are gonna happen and immediately think of how to solve it. And we have to solve it, otherwise, you know, the show, the show stops, which is not what we want. And to give it a bit of context of all this, coming from someone who has two, three months experience, so I'm probably not the most uh, credible person to take this kind of information from. That being said, when I was kind of researching, when I was, when I was offered this role and researching, like, what does a guitar tech do, I don't think there were that many videos online that I could find that kind of gave me exactly what I was looking for, so I'm kind of also making this video for like what my past me would have wanted to see when given an opportunity to be a guitar tech and kind of like what do I need to be prepared to do. I think what'd be good is for me to, well this is pretty much done now, so move this to the side and, and I'll quickly talk about what's in my case uh, that allows me to do my job. Very obviously tuner pedal and I also carry this uh, I don't it's not in here at the moment but I always carry soldering iron with me when you're keeping up with guitars electric guitars electric basses stuff that is electric you do need a soldering iron so a bit of soldering knowledge is uh, needed I would say very much needed um, what else do we have in here tape very important tape is very useful uh, you never know what you'll need it for but you'll be glad to have it square nine volts Always good to have on hand. Spare double A's as well. I don't have, I think I'm just, I've just run out of double A's, so I need to top up on those, but spare double A's because for our uh, in-ear packs and um, the guitar wireless packs, they run on double A's as well. So if they fail, I can quickly run onto stage and change out the double A's. So far that hasn't happened because Creasy's been doing a very good job of making sure our batteries are charged before a show starts. What else is in here? Tiger Bomb. So if you don't know what this is, Tiger Bomb, it's like a Chinese ointment thing, and it is so good for like muscle pains, or you got a blocked nose, just, just anything really. But mainly for muscle pains, because you'll be hauling stuff in and out of venues, into trailers, out of trailers, and they're heavy. Uh, two cases full of guitars and basses, amp heads, cabs, um, which is a pure pain. So, um, and over time, you will get muscle pains and just muscle aches from lifting stuff all the time. So another really important thing is string action gauge. This is extremely, extremely important because when I first met the guys, basically just did a setup on their guitars and basses, made sure that they were extremely happy with the setup, and I noted down all the measurements. So this includes stuff like string heights of each individual string. It also includes neck relief and that kind of thing. This is why I measure everything with. A lot of people who do setups just kind of for themselves, for their own guitars, that kind of thing, and certainly I did as well, is just kind of go off of feel, and that's completely fine if you, you're you just doing it for yourself. But because I'm working for low, then they have their own preferences. I made sure I noted that down. Say it's been a while and I haven't set up the instruments in a bit. Uh, I can just kind of, uh, go straight back to these numbers rather than just trying to go back to how I thought it felt before. So there's no guesswork involved at all with uh, how to set up their instruments and uh, how they like it to feel. Did I talk about the head torch? Absolutely crucial. It's dark backstage and uh, you need one. Sometimes you can't see where you're going and what, or whatever you're doing. So head torch, absolutely crucial. That's kind of pretty much everything I want to go over for this video. Hopefully I was able to include some footage I managed to get from Radar. Whatsoever. I was kind of filming that video without much of a coherent kind of topic I wanted to talk about. But yeah, I guess that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Take care, guys. Bye. I wasn't using a fader! <laughs>